So this is a paper that was accepted to be published soon. So if you have any comments, I still have a few more days for final uh, revisions. So if you have good comments, I would be very happy to hear. Um, what I'm going to try to do in this uh, presentation is go through the process, through the past, the colonial process uh, had in Israel, and take some lessons from it on some reflections on how Israel is, uh, is how the EU is perceived in Israel. Uh, what are the interests, uh, and maybe this is just a lens uh, to look on the relations between the EU and Israel. So that, that's just a study piece. Um, so for those of us who are not so familiar with the Bologna process, uh, it's a harmonization process of higher education institutions, higher education systems that started in 1999 uh, in Europe uh, by four countries. Originally, uh, initially, the EU was not part of the process. On the co it was actually pushed aside. Uh, the countries did not want him involved. In the end, as uh, you can see today, it is part of the problem, uh, program. It's part of the process. It's the main funder. And it has lots of uh, power uh, in the way that it shapes the process to today. Um, so part of the building process, which is mainly Mainly it's dealing with how the different higher education systems can correspond and correlate with each other. But part of it is the global strategy. <coughs> it's the way that the process tries to impact on other parts of the world to be attractive to other parts of the world other than Europe. Today there are 47 countries in the process. Many of them are from a wider, wider Europe, Georgia, for example, and so on. So this is the process, this is our lens. And my theoretical framework, uh, two frameworks actually in this um, paper, is the perceptions, how uh, the EU is perceived in Israel. Uh, as Lucarelli mentioned, it's very uh, interesting and very important uh, to look on perception. Looking at external image means looking at one of the uh, variables that contributes to shaping a European political identity among Europeans. So that's why it is so important. I, I agree with you already. Uh, also, normative power Europe. I will not go into the definition of normative power Europe. I'm sure that you all know it, and you will see how it is related. In <coughs> uh, my methodology, I had interviews with policymakers, both um, Israeli and uh, EU uh, policymakers, and also official documents from both sides. Uh, the sources were analyzed using methods of qualitative uh, content analysis to form a historical analysis and describe the path of Bologna process in Israel. Okay, so what is actually Europe doing in Israel in the sphere of higher education? Um, I will not go into the research. I hope, Rafi, you can be here next year and I'll go <laughs> into the research because that's a whole different paper, what they do on research. But since 2007, there is a student mobility program active in Israel. Since 2008, capacity building in higher education programs are active in Israel, till today. Uh, since 2008, Erasmus Plus office active inside the Council for Higher Education. Okay, it acts from the Council of Higher Education, funded by the EU, directed by the EU. Since 2008, <coughs> when, uh, Israel signed the Yad Figel Convention, so actually, it was uh, acted since uh, 2009. Israel has been represented at the senior level in the Bologna Process uh, Policy Forum. And since 2009, uh, Higher Education Reform Expert, that's a forum that acts, <coughs> funded by the EU, acts to promote the Bologna Process in Israel in other countries. And that's the Israeli forum. Uh, and so just to show that it's all actually directed to the promotion of Bologna Process, this is a survey I had with uh, non-EU participants in Tempus projects, that the capacity building project, the former uh, way it was uh, built, okay, it's under Erasmus Post. So uh, I, the participants were asked during the course of the Tempus project, I was exposed to, they were exposed to Bologna process, ECTS, these are components of the Bologna process, we'll not go into that. So as you can see from the graph, uh, the exposure and the promotion of the Bologna process and its components on a very deep uh, content level is very high. Okay? So this, this is just an example to show that all these uh, programs, even the capacity building in higher education, is much directed to the promotion of the Bologna process in Israel. Okay? So this is what the European does do. 
what do you plan to do? So, what was the Israel response to the Bologna process? Which, I will remind you, started in 1999. So, for the first few years, there was none. No official document, no official citation, nothing. Since 2005, few mentioned, it was mentioned a few times in a different um, interpretations I did. In the, it's in Hebrew, but you, most of you know that. Uh, was mentioned as references in different uh, official reports, discussions in the Knesset and other uh, forms like that. So not really an active response. However, during Yuli Tamir's, uh, when she was at uh, the Ministry of uh, Education, uh, Israel applied to join the Bologna process twice, in 2007 and 2008. Applied twice, um, and I had the uh, interviews with the officials to ask why. And from these uh, the answers, I could uh, trace uh, different reasons that I think reflects much more than just the reasons and motivations on why Israel applied to be part of the Bologna process. And I have the quotes here, but I'm not go deeply into them. But uh, first, not as a nation that falls down. Israel must cooperate with other parts of the world. So the European is just the example, just one of the cases. It wasn't mentioned as a Europe. Uh, the international, uh, international of officials. The policymakers saw Bologna as a way to move other things that they wanted to move inside the uh, higher education system in Israel. And Bologna was just the excuse, the method, the way. Another one was the process has started. We are already all the part of it. It's happening. We have to relate to that. We don't want to be behind the, to be left out of the game. Another one is internationalization, which is high of the agenda even today of the higher education system in Israel. And they saw the Bologna process as a way to promote internationalization in Israel. And also they saw the Bologna process as a way to promote quality in higher education institutions in the higher education system in Israel. Just a factual clarification. Yeah. Did you ask them whether there were uh, any reasons not to join this process? <laughs> I did many some of them three years ago. It was part of my PhD. Uh, I'll get back to it. Okay? But, but it was like, why did you join? It wasn't, why, it wasn't a... Um, the what are the arguments not positive. to join? What are the arguments not well, to join? Well, maybe later, maybe later. Let's let's later. Let her finish her presentation first. Okay. Um, and also, they said that several governmental bodies promoted the application. It wasn't that just the initiative of one uh, minister. Um, okay. However, Israel's application was rejected. Uh, the technical re reason was that Israel is not a member of the Council of Europe. It has to sign the European Cultural Convention, uh, hence uh, it, it cannot be a member. Okay, so that was the technical uh, way that Israel was rejected. However, if you go down and look on deeper on both sides, uh, the picture is more complicated. On the Israeli side, American political pressure uh, deterred Israel from ad adhering the European Cultural Convention because some of the political um, leaders thought that Israel should join the Council of Europe and sign the, um, the convention. However, uh, the political pressure, uh, a call from the Ministry of uh, Defense <laughs> said the word. Uh, and on the European side, the rejection appeared to be merely technical. However, evidence shows, and I had interviews with people who sat on that committee, uh, that Israel's application was hard to digest for some of the members then. First, for political reasons and what Israel represents. Second, uh, because it would have expanded the geographical boundaries of the process, which now is not a, an issue at all, because now it's very, very much expanded already. So Israel's failure to satisfy a technical criterion was a convenient excuse for technical refusal and avoided the need to get involved in complicated and politically controversial issues. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, the Israeli um, political echelon decided to drop off the idea and just left it alone. However, the higher education institutions took the leadership and started to promote it themselves, started to be very much uh, involved in all these different programs that 
helps to promote the Bologna process. This was after and you leave Tamir? Yes, yeah, after they decided uh, to leave it alone. Uh, so actually, the Bologna process is promoted till today, bottom up, <coughs> okay? Not by the ministry, uh, but one, although uh, in September 1st, uh, there was a launching of a, a twinning project in the Ministry of Education, which is connected to Bologna process. But this is the first step that is not bottom up. Um, so the motivations of the uh, higher education institutions are different. Uh, they talk about student exchange, they talk about EU funding gra funded grants that is related, they will have the relations, it will be much more easy, And but they do talk about the inter internationalization in that Bologna represents for them a way to promote their inter internationalization process. So from all, these, from all this story, I have three conclusions. First, the Bologna process perceived as a tool. Okay, Israel um, for Israel, the Bologna process is, main, is mainly a tool. And I think that if you look on European programs, many times Israel and other third countries would look on the program as a tool to promote things that they want to promote anyhow. However, as you saw in some of the interviews, Bologna was also a way to develop dialogue with Europe. And I see Europe as a very important partner for Israel on all levels. I think that the network of relationships, there is more than simply the academic ties. There is also a set of values that is part of the picture. And there is no doubt that Israel, which is not Europe, but does perhaps uh, claim to have the values of European society, has the ability to integrate and work together. And this is from an Israeli official. So this is normative for you, that's why I <laughs> took the... Um, and I think that to conclude, there is a duality in these relations. And I think that this duality reflects in other fields in the relations, not only in <coughs> higher education. And that's why I think that this uh, paper has something to say to the world and to us, and think on how the relations should be uh, promoted and grow. Thank you.